So let's take a moment here for uh, everybody who's listening to this, who has a purity test and demands that politicians meet them where they are. I want to take a moment for all of us to uh, pat ourselves on the back because what we're doing is working. There's no question about it. Uh, on the one hand, there are factions within the Democratic Party who keep getting worse and worse. No denying that they exist. You know, uh, Chuck Schumer, Joe Manchin, Claire McCaskill, Nancy Pelosi. Some of the top people in the Democratic Party, their response is always run further to the right, be more corrupt, be more corporatist, be, be more of a warmonger. And they're failing beyond imagination. But there are also some politically astute and clever senators and congresspeople, for that matter, who uh, see what's happening in the country and they're like, oh shit, I need to adjust or else. One of those people is Kamala Harris. So look at this here from Jeff Stein. He says, this is what Kamala Harris is for. Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage, free college, strength in social security, and now she just started refusing corporate PAC money. We recently discussed Kirsten Gillibrand, same thing. She rejected uh, corporate PAC money. Now, am I skeptical about Kamala Harris? <laughs> you bet your butt cheeks I am. I'm as skeptical as they come when it comes to Kamala Harris. Why? Because I know about her record. So, for example, when she was the Attorney General in California, she let Steve Mnuchin, who's now the Treasury Secretary, and he was a Goldman Sachs lackey, and he was the head of One West Bank in California. He let, she let Steve Mnuchin get away with... Countless crimes. They were foreclosing on people's houses early. I mean, it was abysmal what was going on there. Yeah, these vulture capitalists taking advantage of people in the at the height of the Great Recession, and Kamala Harris just kind of idly sat by. Her own, her own staffer said, "You need to go after him," and she didn't do it. Why? Donations. That's why. So, I'm skeptical of her. Not only that, she's also been on the record as saying, "Hey, we need to not be." Telling people on the left, hey, we can't be purists if we want to win elections. Actually, it's quite the opposite. We need to be purists to win elections because it turns out the American people agree with down-the-line left-wing policies. So the more purist you are, the more likely you are to win. So, But she said this stuff in the past. Now she's like, okay, I see the political mood in the country and I see where everybody is, so now I'm going to move in that direction. So here's the conundrum that we're in. Here's the paradox that we're in. We can't say, we can't demand, like, hey, all you goddamn corporate Democrats, here are the rules. Here's what you need to be in favor of. $15 minimum wage, Medicare for all, you know, taking no corporate PAC money, so on and so forth. Here are the rules, and you either adopt these or lose. And then they adopt them, and then we turn around and go, yeah, I don't care. You should still lose anyway. Because then what we are is we've set up a non-falsifiable position. Doesn't matter what they do, we're against them. Uh, and it's, it's a lose-lose for them. Either they continue to be shitty, in which case we point out how shitty they are, or they move to the right position and we point out how shitty they are. So on the one hand, we need to take a win where we get it. These are wins. There's no doubt that this is a win. When Kirsten Gillibrand said no corporate PAC money, when, uh, when Kamala Harris said no corporate PAC money and $15 minimum wage, so on and so forth. So we got to take those wins where we can get them. But I will say this, all the facts matter. Hashtag all facts matter. So, you know, now what you need to keep an eye on is those, not the corporate PAC money, but the high dollar uh, fundraisers for individuals. Because Kirsten Gillibrand got rid of the corporate PAC money, but she takes a lot of her money from big money donors at these, you know, these dinners that they do, where it's a, thousands of dollars per plate. And that's still a form of corruption. The real way that you're not being corrupt is if you take small dollar donations like Bernie Sanders, $27 at a time from regular people. That's really getting rid of all the corruption. So it's good that she stopped taking corporate PAC money. It's definitely a step in the right direction. But the next step is, all right, chill with the high dollar donations, because then you're beholden to those people, and some of those people might be the heads of those corporations that you pretended like you stopped being corrupt with. You see my point? And then also, she's not for the Medicare for All bill in California, so this is sly 
it's a lot of clever politicking. You see what I mean? And also, let's remember, this is at a time right now where these bills have no prayer of passing because the Republicans control everything. So it's so easy when there's nothing attached to it, no consequences to go, I am for all of the right things. The real question is, when the votes actually come, are you going to be on the right side? Now, that's where my real test is. So if you're making all the right noises with your mouth at this point in time and saying you're for all the right things, okay, I'm cautiously optimistic. I hear that and I go, I'm happy you did that, but I still want to wait to see because the proof is in the pudding. The real test is when those votes actually come up. If the Democrats get control, imagine the Democrats with a supermajority, and then what does somebody like Kamala Harris do? Because that's all I really care about, you know? Let's say at the end of the day, Kamala Harris really does vote for Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage, uh, and takes no corporate PAC money and all that stuff. Well, all I care about is the votes. So even given her shitty past, I'll say whatever, as long as you're voting the right way now, that's all I give a shit about. So my takeaway from them moving in the right direction is I'm cautiously optimistic. And it genuinely might be the case that she's scared. And that's good. That's what we want. We want people like Kamala Harris to be scared by the base and to realize you don't win elections by running away from your base. You run election. You win elections by embracing your base. And what she might realize is, even though in her heart of hearts she's not for these these actual populist left policies, if at the end of the day she votes for those positions because she's scared of getting kicked out of office if she goes against those positions, good, good. I'll fucking take it. I'll take it with a giant smile on my face. So, in summation, I think uh, everybody who's listening to this who has a purity test should pat themselves on the back. Because no matter how much the mainstream shits on you, this is why these politicians are bucking to your will. Because you're willing to say, no, fuck off. If you're not for these things, I'm not going to vote for you. So it's those people who are obstinate. It's those people who have standards and principles. It's those people who say, I don't care if Jill Stein has no path to victory. I'm going to vote for her anyway because I agree with what she's in favor of. It's those people who are forcing politicians to do their bidding and they're concerned voters who only care about the well-being of their fellow citizens and getting the right policies in place. It's because of you that people like Kamala Harris are bending to your will. So, you know, a lot of people act like, oh, don't do the mean tweets and uh, to these people and don't, you know, hey, just fall in line behind uh, corporate Democrats. Well, I say to you, fuck no. You don't have to do that at all because it's the people who don't do that who are responsible for the corporate Democrats becoming less and less corporate over time and realizing, hey, I either do what they want or I lose. It's the people who have that disagreeable fuck-off attitude that really lead to change. The civil rights protesters weren't marching through the street saying, yes, I would prefer this position, but if you don't desegregate, I can see your point too. No, they were out there going, hey, this or else. Now, we're nonviolent, and I agree with nonviolence, of course, but we're not budging. This is what we're calling for, and that's it. That's it. That's the end of the conversation. It's not like the racist uh, Alabama Sheriff Department sicking dogs on peaceful young black kids. It's not like they have a point also unless you're the mountain. No. It's we're right, you're wrong, bend to our will or else. And it works. Political pressure works. So now you get that from the left, and they're saying that to the corporate Democrats, and some corporate Democrats are either clever enough to say, okay, I agree with you at face value, but maybe my votes will be different, but some corporate Democrats genuinely are going, no, 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 I now have to agree with you and vote on that side or else I'm done and I'd rather keep my career, thank you very much. So with enough pressure, we are more powerful than the corporate donors. That's what everybody needs to realize. That's what everybody needs to realize. We, we there are so many of us that if we apply full pressure, that beats the full pressure of even corporate dollars. So um, cautiously optimistic is my take on this. I'm happy she's coming out in favor of this. Just keep your eye on her actual voting record. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is the actual voting record. And if it turns in the proper direction, great. Then we could all support her. If it doesn't, then you keep hammering away and doing what you're doing.